Our second talk uh, of the session uh, is Corinne Ledger. Uh, so Corinne is an artist, chef, educator, and creative. Uh, she's been working as an artist for more years than she can count. Uh, it can be count applied to cooking as well. Um, she accidentally fell into the electronic side with some of her creative pieces and then became excited by 3D printing. Uh, the Sydney Girl Geek community actually commissioned Corinne earlier last year to um, print 3D print earrings for our all women hackathon, she hex. So you can come check out my earrings later. They're very cool. Um, and so Corinne is going to talk about how she combines all of this stuff together. So please welcome Corinne Ledger. Okay, so I was going to start um, totally the opposite from the last speaker, Chris. Um, I'm basically an artist coming in to technology and half the time don't really know what I'm doing. Um, my partner does work in IT and um, does kind of run the internet of things, so at least he's helpful in that way. But um, yeah, even, I've even done programming courses and I can tell you I'm probably the only one who ever failed them because I just <laughs> couldn't. <laughs> I, know, I know the outline, I know how to do it, but when it comes to actually doing it, it's not me. Um, I think my brain's just wired totally differently. Now, I'm hoping this is going to work. Yes. Okay, so um, basically, um, just apologies to anyone here who's, which is probably most of you or all of you, really high-tech people. This is not such a high-tech um, talk. I won't be giving you code or anything. I do apologise. Um, and if you do have any questions, welcome to ask me. And if I don't know, I will ask somebody that does know, preferably Justin at home. Um, OK, so who am I? Basically, I'm, as I said, I'm an artist um, and a chef. And I've been doing both, been doing sh chefing for over 30 years now. Um, and I trained and I've also done art for probably all of my life. Um, basically, I like to say I'm um, mark make or make marks is what a lot of artists like to say because I trained as a printmaker. It's about as technical as I got. Um, but now the tools are changing quite a lot. Um, so yes, basically I'm artist, an artist or a creative. Um, so what I just wanted to talk to you um, about, maybe just discuss just a few projects that I've worked on. Um, that are quite interesting and I've been trying to combine food and trying to combine my art with these things. Um, I had the good luck to study in Italy some years ago at a gastronomic university, did a master's, and part of it was doing, um, what was it, an internship, and I was lucky to do an internship with these interesting designers and we got to do all sorts of things. That's some two things that they did and that kind of pushed my boundaries in a different area, because I was usually an illustrator, and then suddenly, oh, look what else I can do, sort of more 3D things. So basically, yes, I cla trained classically as a chef, so I trained with French-style cuisine that have gone on from doing a lot of other co cooking since then, and I trained classically as an artist. I did a lot of life drawing and things like that. So it's interesting to bring in these skills and bring them into a new area, being with the technology. Um, and this, the people that I worked with were called Arabeski de Latte, and you could look them up if you like. They do a lot of interesting things with design and food. Um, the next thing is I'll just talk about some of the ideas forming. Um, really, I wanted to do new things with my art, so then I decided, yes, the electronics looked quite interesting, and I was kind of pushed into that. Um, my partner encouraged me to do it because he's always got gadgets lying around as Chris was showing different things. Justin's got all these different things around the house as well. Um, but I never really, really thought out I would do that because I just couldn't see myself doing it. But on one hand, I wanted to. On one hand, I was a bit scared. Anyway, so um, as I said, I studied printmaking, so that's kind of a little bit technical. So that pushed me into other things. So from there, um, I was a um, head or was leader, I should say, of Slow Food in Sydney. Um, Slow Food's food organisation that works with sustainability with food. It's a very interesting organisation. We do a lot of really interesting events and things. And I thought, well, we should have an, an event um, and try and incorporate art into the event and do some of the things that I had done with these women in Italy. Something that we weren't really doing in Sydney was a bit more interesting. Um, so I just latched on to people I knew at the Botanic Gardens. We got um, this fantastic venue. 
We were able to do a fantastic tour with the Indigenous people at the um, Botanic Gardens and they took, us, took um, my group around the Sydney-based native um, garden, which is just basically foods that grow in the Sydney basin. And I thought, well, somehow I can do something in relation to this with the art and make this interesting. So, as I said, this is a slow food event, beautiful place. We did it. I'm afraid I don't have photos of it. Um, and getting on to that. So we, I put together a program with some of the other people on the committee and we were working on a way to just incorporate everything. We had a beautiful venue. We had fantastic people helping with the tour. Um, and now it's time to start designing what I wanted to do, the art piece, which was a tablecloth. So that's really hard to see, but I started to do a whole lot of mock-up drawings. And then this is where I was going back to mark making again before going into the technology side. Um, a lot of fun. Um, trying to work out what to do with this cloth. So in the end, um, I started to get drawings and had to work out what sort of materials to do it with because this is kind of all new. I didn't really know what I was doing and I didn't really know where I was going. And so every single step of the way was very new and very experimental. And if I made a mistake, well, it probably wouldn't work at all. So... Um, Basically, I don't know what that's doing now. Anyway, so I designed the cloth on paper. Then I decided I needed a material that was going to be resilient. You could roll up, you could scrunch up, you wouldn't need to iron it, obviously, but you could still sew the interactive, the um, interactive, the um, thread into it, the different things into it, and still somehow get images onto it that I was illustrating and then taking into Photoshop. Um, so what could I use? And I ended up using just a very light canvas that they use for that sort of printing. And that worked. And it was fairly wash and wear as well that you could, you know, spill things on it and still wash over it. So it had a lot of the, um, I don't know, had a lot of the things I was looking for in a material. So that really worked quite well. It was quite easy to sew as well. So when I started to um, sew the thread into it, I found that it was very easy just even... I was worried about ripping it, but it was actually quite resilient. So these were things that I was considering. I'm going back. Um, so you can sort of see with a bit of that, unfortunately I don't have the cloth with me, but I um, had a whole lot of things printed on it, and then I sewed into it, and then there's just a photo there with some of the um, little wires and things that I was using, and I was experimenting with what I can do. Um, so basically about the cloth, I wanted to obviously make a theme, it couldn't just be something that's just sitting there on a table, big deal. It needed to do something, it needed to be interactive, it needed to be something that people could interact with on many levels. So as an artist, I was not just thinking about the technology, I was also thinking, okay, so we have a table, we have a tablecloth. A lot of people start their meals um, at the table. And so I was looking at what food meant to a lot of people. So I was looking at that level, then I was looking at the next level, what could we do with that to make it interesting, to make people talk about their food, think about their food, and ask questions about their food. And again, that had to go back into the event we were doing, and I was using native foods and non-native foods and getting people to think about the foods that we actually eat, um, and seasonal foods and things like that. So this cloth was sort of working on a lot of different areas and a lot of different levels. Um, so not only did I have all the technology to kind of do, get my head around and learn new things, but it was also thinking of as this sort of art piece as well. So there's some just little details of it. It was a, um, it's not so much upside down, but it went like a big circle around the cloth and everything was sewn. All right. All right, so there's some people doing interacting with it. So what made this cloth interactive? Um, basically, as I said, I decided to do it with a colonial style of illustration that matched the building, that matched the era and matched all of that um, aspect, what I was doing. I also then decided to do animals, as I said, and plants and things that we eat that we know and then other things that we aren't as familiar with, like kangaroos and native plants 
and items like that. So you could be looking at the food while you're eating and while you're interacting with the electronics as well. Um, and so the interactivity, as I said, began as soon as the audience looked at this. And there's some photos of people doing things with it. I had a lot of um, native plants around. Being in the Botanic Gardens was fantastic because I went out and picked a whole lot of beautiful plants with us, for us and put them all together. So it was really, really good in that way. Um, and I painted, I just grabbed a whole lot of um, recycled plates and I just painted on them and just used them and just sort of be part of it because I wanted the whole um, table, the whole tablecloth and everything to be all part of this as well. Um, and then the food was also obviously part of the event. People loved to eat, so people really enjoyed that quite a bit, obviously. That always brings people in. They have a little walk around, they learn something, they have a play with the cloth, and then they get to eat as well. Um, so the cloth basically had sensors on it. So when you took a plate and you put the plate down, um, it lit up different LEDs. And so those LEDs were lit up against different um, words and things. So it was kind of a little bit of a game and you're, um, you know, asking things and it was telling you and the plate was doing that wherever you were putting the plate. So I kind of made it a little bit of a game for people in that way. I want to go beyond that next. Um, I've got another um, exhibition coming up later in the year so I'll be going a bit further with some of those ideas to make it more interesting. More photos, just try to use photos because unfortunately I don't have the cloth with me. Um, so as I said, I used um, circuits, I used LEDs, I had a lily pad that I started to learn to use, um, so, and then put them around and lit them up and did all these sort of interesting things, tried to mix colours as well. So I was, trying to look, I was trying to challenge myself a little bit with things that I didn't really know much about, but it was really quite interesting. Um, I had lots of conductive thread. I was really interested in um, reading a bit more about the history of all of this as well. So I was learning as I was going along, obviously. I did a little bit of an um, interview for the ABC for this as well because they were quite fascinated by it. Um, so you can probably read up there. So I, it was sort of the dual use of sewing as well as I said. We've got this sewing and hominess and the tablecloth and then you've got the sort of old colonial thing and then you're bringing that back to the modernity. So it was quite a, kind of fun to do all of that. Um, let's see. And then I just had a photo. I've just got some links there. Obviously, you guys will probably know about this a bit more. But I use little bird and some Adafruit things, so I've just got some links there for that. Um, and then the next thing I was going to have a little chat about was the 3D jewellery. Um, I know Chris has probably talked about one side of 3D um, printers and things. Um, I'm coming, for, again, from the artist's point of view, so I'm sort of coming from the, oh, look what I can draw, how can I make that print something that I want it to print? Um, that's... Yeah, that's where I'm coming from. That's what I was doing. So I was just really, really um, looking at drawing things and then making them into something physical. I find it's very limiting with one colour, so I'm going to do some more experimentation and see what I can do with this little printer we've got. But um, it, all, it, is, it is still fun, but there is a lot of clean-up you have to do, with I find, with the earrings. And I also find... Um, that it kind of limited with the materials. You can do bamboo and you can do a corn, I think it's a cornstarch plastic that we use. And I sort of put it into Illustrator or um, Photoshop and then we can take it across to SketchUp and then put it across to the printer that way. Um, the printer, I think I had a photo next. That's the printer that we're using at the moment. Um, when we came back from the States, we bought a little we had a cupcake thing and we had a few different other things. But this thing, I find it's, it's for schools, but it's quite good actually. Um, you know, does what you want it to do. It's fun. And if you really want to do something more, you can probably send it off to Shapeways. Um, so basically, draw. I draw the picture. I make, it's a bit like a stencil. You've got to make sure that it all, it's, you've got enough um, lines that are held, holding together and it doesn't fall apart. And then... That's the earring part. Hold up the cats. I just did some little cats. So 
you can probably all see that anyway. So it's sort of fun to kind of do an illustration and then it comes out the other side, spews out the other side in plastic, and um, fluoroplastic at that. <laughs> um, and that's some of my painting work that I do. I'm more an illustrator than a painter, but I sort of was looking at my parrots and using my parrots to get some ideas to do the parrots and things that I'm doing. So I've been just sort of looking at doing some Australian native parrots because I do a lot of Australian native birds. I mean, I do a lot of sorts of art and just trying to think of some different things that I can do. Again, I'm not coming from a programming um, background or side. I'm coming from an artist, so I'm sort of coming in with that, how can I make that work? So, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, and there's some 3D earrings I did for the Girl Geek conference that um, Christine's wearing as well. <laughs> that was interesting. I did a, like 125 pairs. Amazing that printer put really like, woo woo. <laughs> 15 minutes I think it took to do one earring, <laughs> something like that. We were doing them for uh, oh, days. But anyway, the thing we did find out was some plastics work a lot better than other plastics. So. Um, you know, some are quite firm, but red and some of the other colours are a bit awful. So that would be something else to consider if you're doing any um, 3D printing at home. Um, and then I do them at the markets. I sell my stuff at the markets and I sell on Etsy and things and I don't have any links up, which is a bit stupid, but anyway. <laughs> Being IT people, as you all are. Um, yeah, but I am, I am on the internet everywhere. Um, but I just put my little earrings and I took some photos yesterday because they're a lot clearer to see. So it's probably easier to see than me holding up something like that. Um, and then, of course, challenges being a um, more creative person than a technical person. As, you know, everything's a challenge for me. It's just, it's incredible. Um, so basically, challenges, I just find technology can be tricky. I've got a stencil thing at home and I'm at the moment painting a dog for Sydney Council for... Year of the Dog for Chinese New Year, and I've got these fantastic ideas, and I, I've got this stencil cutter kind of thing, and it doesn't work. <laughs> I, I, it's new. There's no. There should be no problem. I'm sure, anyone else could just plug it in and put their image across, but not me. It goes woo woo. Doesn't do it. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on, and so I'm going to be the next part of the week trying to play with it to get these stencils to work. Anyway, so for me, challenges are always technology, but that's not everybody. Um, confidence and understanding of technology, of course, is like anything. Um, colours with this, I think, are a bit limited, but um, there are some beautiful, brighter colours that I would like, I'd love to see with this, but the bamboo's nice. Um, plastic, some work well, some just don't. Limited by the printer, of course, the better and bigger printer you have, the better, I'd say limited by materials and image, it's sort of limited with what you can actually draw. So I don't know, as I said, I'm going from a more free, free flow thing into a more technologically restrained area. So I am going from a probably a different world than a lot of people. Maybe you guys are coming from the other way and going into the other side, I don't know. Anyway, some new ways forward, hopefully and hopefully I am organising another exhibition. It's coming up soon with my, more of my food and technology and things. And um, more earrings. Um, somebody has seen these earrings at the markets and wants me to design more and more for her for the Strand Arcade, so that should be interesting. And the cloth idea, as I said, will go further. And I think that's, that's it, really. <laughs> Thank you. It's not unusual to have people in technology doing art, but uh, people moving from art to technology, hi, I'm up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can sometimes be a bit fraught, and I'm wondering about the reception you've had from people in tech. Oh, sorry. You're right. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> is it, 
How are people in tech taking you trying to use their technology for art? Do you find supportive or unsupportive environments? I don't actually meet a lot of people apart from my partner, really. I mean, that sounds funny. I mean, I just go and do things. I don't really, you know, if they want to ask questions, they can, and I can look like a bit of an idiot with them. But, you know, as I said, I'm coming from one angle, and I know what I'm doing, and I understand the um, materials that I use if I'm doing any sort of art. I understand the materials I use very well, but it's this part that it's not so familiar for me. So if they, um, I don't know, don't mind, they can say what they like really, but no, I don't meet too many. <laughs> and I have to say, when I was doing printmaking in the Stone Age, and I'm going to say the Stone Age because computers were just really coming in, and I can remember um, we were starting to use um, printed items with our computers at um, uni and that was a big deal. So um, nobody was laughing at anybody at that stage because it was also new. But no, I, ha I don't really have any problems. <laughs> any others? Thanks Karen, that was really interesting. Um, I'm interested in um, community access to some of the tools, like the bigger 3D printers, and if you've um, looked into getting access to, as an artist, to any of the like more expensive bigger printers in maker spaces, or are they just not available? Or they are available. Does that suit I, they you? are available. I've just got what I've got at home, so I use that. But I even know I'm very near Surrey Hills Library, and they've got a printer, and they've got a whole lot of things there. But I know a lot of the public spaces do have printers and they are good. But I'd suggest the other way to do is, is create something and send it off to like Shapeways or someone else to do the printing if you've got something very specific, you know, metal, like a nice metal item. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you.